Corona or rising again. Same. Mm. So this is kind of strange situation because nobody knows um, what it will be. Is there going to mm. be again hospitalization? Uh, mm. Until now, the death rate is not high. Well, yeah. three, three persons a day. Mm. The question is, is that more than the flu at the moment? No. But nobody knows where it goes mm. and everybody doesn't care because Europe is a mess. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, tell me something new. Yeah. And, um, so the thing is that uh, uh, all the regulations for every country is something else. So, mm. so Spain is red. Uh, France is a little bit red, a little bit orange. We are orange, but we are red for others. But and you know, and it's a mess. If you, it's a mess. Absolutely. If, yeah. And I'm working very international, so mm -hmm. it's, uh, I don't know, then I have to go to, to Zagreb, to Warsaw, to, and then you, it's like flying between bullets, you know? You mm -hmm. don't know if you are if you go in quarantine or not. Mm. I don't know. It's um, very strange. It is, absolutely. Uh, so we lost Chido again. We oh. lost Chido again. Pity. Oh, no. I will ask, is it working? Is it working? So you were all, you all in Zimbabwe, if I understand. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm from the National Gallery of Zimbabwe. We met. Um, we met when you were doing your um, exhibition. Yes, absolutely. That. Yes. Uh, yeah. Exactly. You, at, at that time, you were working in the education, no? No, no. I, I was in the curatorial department. Oh, okay. I was, I was Raphael's PA. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was very um, interesting, eh? When it we... was very, very interesting. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it made an impact. I still think it was a nice show. Ah, me too, hey? Chido's back. Yes, Chido is back, connecting oh. to audio now. She said, "I don't know." So once she's in, we can we can start. Is she gone again? Mm. Just muted. Chido, can you hear us? Chido You're muted. Mm. Valerie, can you unmute her, maybe? Okay. You, as as a host, you should be should be able to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm waiting for her. Okay, she's unmuted. Ja. Chido? Nee, ik ben dat scherm kwijt. Ik ben dat nog alleen maar daar. Wat is de bedoeling? Chido, can you hear us? Mm, now she is muted again. That's weird. Zeg je? Ah, yeah. okay. That's okay. I will try to call her. And... Chido? Chido, hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Chido. Welcome back. <laughs> Connection is off. Oh Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Okay, I, I am here. No, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I don't understand why the connection is like this. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Because this is hot. crazy. Okay, so can we start now? Are you ready? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our Harare Conversations, Searching for Absolutes um, in the Time of uh, Climate and uh, Biodiversity. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome uh, Regina uh, and Chido, who are in conversation today. Um, welcome. <laughs> Okay, so Regina, or maybe mm -hmm. let's start with Chido before um, her her connection um, gets problems again. Yeah, so, absolutely. Chido, Chido, can you kindly give us a brief background um, about you and the work you do and where you work from? Mm. <laughs> Hello? Oh, she's muted again. Yeah. Hello, Chido. Okay, maybe we can uh, start with you, Regina. Okay. Yes, great. Yep. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Yes, no, I'm okay. connected. I don't know what. <laughs> no. no? Uh oh. Regina? Okay, <laughs> so yeah, my name is Regina Feind. I'm the country director of a German NGO. Uh, it's called Welthungerhilfe. Um, yeah, I'm the country director here in Zimbabwe. And um, I have been working with the organization for almost 15 years now and in different countries. Um, our, our focus area is, is around food and nutrition security. Actually, the, the name Welthungerhilfe, um, it's a German word. It, it means something like... Um, yeah, global hunger relief. Um, so, um, yeah, fighting hunger is actually our our core mandate. And um, yeah, as a person, my, my background is um, African studies. Um, I, I studied many many years back, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and intercultural management. And um, yeah, I've been living here in Zimbabwe now for almost five years, and I, I very much enjoy. And um, I mean, personally, also I have a passion in, in conservation. So I'm also very much interested in the, in our environment, in, in nature. Um, what I love here in Zimbabwe is really going hiking, going, being, being outside and exploring the, the nature. And um, yeah, therefore I'm very grateful to, to be invited here today. Oh, great. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for your introduction. Um, Chido, can you hear me? Hello, Chido. Okay, so, since Kuhn, Kuhn, since you work with Chido, maybe you could give us a brief background of what you do uh, together with Chido. And then maybe when she comes in, she can just give us. Uh, Hello, everyone. Hello, Chido. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Connection is. Hmm. Uh, it's quite bad. Okay, so Kun, may you kindly go yeah. ahead? Um, so I uh, I met Chido actually. Um, I have to think. I think about seven years ago. Um, so she is connected uh, to Belgium, and um, she was uh, the, she was doing a traveling tour um, in different projects. Uh, which were around uh, uh, sustainable food, uh, because as you know, Shido is uh, uh, one of these persons who is uh, um, who is teaching young orphans how to to breed mushrooms, and actually that comes from her background as being an orphan, an orphan herself. Uh, she learns actually that when you control the food chain. In your in your village, you control your life actually, and I think that is very important because the sentence always strikes me that um, if if you can control your life, 
that means that people show respect for you. Mm -hmm. If you don't offer the people in your village something, um, they start to use you or abuse you. It's uh, something really, um, it's very hard, but she was clever enough to understand. Not everybody is at that age, because we are talking when she was very young, eh? seven years old. Uh, not everybody understands that it's going in that way. And actually, if you make it a little bit bigger than only Africa, uh, it's everywhere in the world, you know? It's also, it's also here. You have to offer your community something, you know? Um, but not at the age of seven. But anyway, uh, it's, it's different in different uh, in different. But anyway, I think that the, the baseline you understood and she understood and that's why she is um, uh, she's giving her whole life to um, uh, to to learn young orphans how they how they can uh, uh, run their life and how to be creative. That was one of the reasons also that when why she was in Belgium also to to follow lessons in this uh, in this movement, and uh, all of a sudden, through a, a mutual friend that we had, she came to my studio uh, because uh, she, the, the friend said, who is the director of a national park, said you have to meet uh, uh, this artist. And actually, from the first moment, you know, we had this kind of connection and understanding, which uh, is very rare. Not every every time these things are happening. And actually she, she, was, she was coming with a specific question. And the question was actually, how can I help my children, you know, to, to make them more, uh, to make them stronger and to, to give them more creativity. At that time and, and, and still now, I have, a, I have a project which is called Cosmo Golem Project which is actually a big sculpture that children is making themselves. And inside of the sculpture, they can put their, their, their hope, their dreams. But first we, we start to make philosophical talks with the children. And that sounds very um, intellectual, but actually children are big philosophers everywhere in the world. So then this project is a known project where that I'm running already for, for 20 years in different parts of the world and uh, mainly with uh, uh, with children who are living in circumstances which are not the best ones. Um, because in the opinion, um, I, I believe that if, if you can motivate the creativity um, and, and, and the intellectual brain, which you get normally in school, the knowledge, you can, you, you, you can grow faster, you have more, um, more possibilities. So, so Shida was asking for that one. And then I decided to come to Zimbabwe. I saw how she was working, uh, giving education to the children, not only to learn how to breed uh, mushroom because the mushroom is actually only the vehicle uh, to reach the children and to, uh, and to talk with them about, about many topics in life. And, um, and, uh, and, and so we installed the project which was the Cosmogolf and start to talk with the children and give them the ID that somebody, not only the ID, but somebody is listening to you and you can talk with the others. And when you talk to the others, they can also listen to you. And when, when at the same time you are creative, um, if there are many eyes looking at what you are making, you can discover also something inside of a child which they cannot say in words, but which they can say uh, through creativity, and um, and this was the first, actually the first meeting um, when when we did this project in Zimbabwe, which was actually uh, and still very successful. Um, uh, we decided to to take another step, and the step was to make the combination with Shido's mushrooms and my chickens, uh, because as an artist, I'm breeding chicken as a piece of art, which is which is a very complex story. Uh, but the National Gallery knows that because they invited me to do an exposition uh, in, the in the National Gallery. So the, the crossbreeding of chickens is actually um, uh, 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 breaking, breaking the races of every chicken in every country and come to a cosmopolitan chicken, the one who has more uh, DNA inside. So 
So that brings us to a chicken who is, can conquer different environments. Um, because now I'm making a big step because, because the, 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 the real thing is that I have now chickens who have 13 million DNA. That means that it's uh, three times as much as a, as a normal chicken that you, that you buy in the supermarket. So, um, so having that chicken that can live in, 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 in communities, um, that, that we started actually in uh, Shido's Future of Hope. And with the, the, so the leftover of the mushrooms can be feed to the chickens. And so you get a kind of sustainable uh, food chain, uh, which can serve the communities. Um, so that all the, the whole body of that work we brought into the National uh, Gallery in Zimbabwe to actually make a discussion about sustainable food. To, but not only that, also that uh, how to empower communities and how to um, um, actually how to how to look for new leadership in one way or another. So, so but with the combination of the creativity, an artist like me and a, a social entrepreneur as Shido Govera, um, I, I think, I think um, we, we started a, a relationship that uh, where we, uh, where we discover many things. Um, also, uh, the Chicken Project, for example, went to, went to Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, with the Ilri Center, uh, we built a big, uh, a big farm, which is a piece of art, but it's also a lab. It's crossbreeding, and the outcome goes to the communities. So that will expand in many places in, in Africa. So this is actually the connection that I have with Chido, and we're working, um, yeah, actually, I, I can say we work daily and um, um, and we are always trying to find uh, new ways to expand uh, uh, this kind of uh, um, yeah this kind of of, of creativity um, to, to to find new ways in the in the food chain but also in education that's a little bit our story very short, yeah. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kun. Um, can you hear me? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, I okay. hear you. All right, yes. okay, thank you so much. Chido, mm -hmm. welcome back. Um, I, hope, I hope you can hear us. Okay. Yes, Chido? I can hear you loud and clear now. Oh, great, awesome, oh. welcome mm -hmm. back. <laughs> yes, I can hear you. All right. Thank you. Um, we were just uh, uh, going through the backgrounds, and um, Kun gave us a brief background about what what you guys do. I don't know if there's uh, maybe you could just tell us what you do just briefly, and then we can move on to to, to our next our next issue. Sure. My name is Chido Guevara, and I'm the founder of the Future of Hope Foundation. The Future of Hope is an organization that is working to empower communities through food production. We have a big focus on helping, especially women and girls, um, get a dignified livelihood using resources that are available to them locally. And we are very sensitive to issues of sustainability and, and trying to help with all different challenges that uh, um, uh, face our world today. And of course, questions around climate action, questions around uh, biodiversity are very, very important to us. Um, uh, and having personally grown up in rural Zimbabwe with my grandmother, some experiences from um, that uh, part of my childhood are also a big motivation towards the work that I do today towards my interest in, uh, in, in, in biodiversity, my interest in sustainable food in general. So I'm looking uh, forward to this um, uh, discussion today and seeing wh yeah, where we can take it together, sharing the different experiences. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Chido. Thank you so much. 
Um, let's move on to our, our next issue. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, uh, climate change and biodiversity? Um, I don't know who wants to go first. Regina or Chido? Chido, go ahead. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> um, my thoughts on, um, on, on, on biodiversity, my thoughts on change. Uh, let me start uh, first by bio biodiversity for me is thing that I cannot fully uh, explain relating it to what I grew up doing with my grandmother. I grew up with my grandmother who was behind years old. And with my grandmother, we used to go out to the wild foraging for mushrooms. That's what marked my journey with mushrooms, even though it didn't directly relate to farming mushrooms. And it is about, it, we went foraging for food in the wild, mushrooms, wild vegetables and everything. And that was an important part of my life. And when I reflect on that today, the next all the things about uh, uh, my brother don't exist anymore. I notice a change in in in, in the uh, uh, genetic variations, species variations. The ecosystem has shifted considerably since that time. I understand the biodiversity to be a combination what we know and consider to be important, that they have personal relationships, like I had personal relationships with foraging for mushrooms with my grandmother. And those things that we may not interact with at the level I interacted with mushroom forage, my grandmother on a daily basis, but are necessary for maintaining the balance of our world, the balance of our ecosystem. So my thing, my diversity really is, that the things that relate to my day-to-day -day living that I can really comprehend on a daily uh, basis. And though not so much in my everyday life, but are important for bringing about balance. And uh, of course, climate change being the combination of uh, uh, weather and environment. Uh, no? Have we lost her again? Mm. Oh, she's there, but she, uh, just her connection. She's still, can't hear her. Huh? Uh, Hello. Hi. Hi. Yes, Chido. I <laughs> um, so I was saying that biodiversity and, and, and climate change are issues that are very, very close to have some of this personal experience. And it's something, they are part and parcel of what is important in the work that I do today. Oh, great. Thank you very much. That's, that's very, very interesting. Um, uh, an interesting background. Um, Regina. Uh, um, yeah. Thank you. I can actually very much relate to what Chido just Hello. said. Because, um, and I can also bring a, an example from, from my family. Um, when we used to, when I was a child and we used to visit uh, my, my grandfather, uh, we had to go about 100 k's um, by car to, to, to see them. And normally we had to stop maybe twice during the journey to clean the, the windscreen from in summer times from, from all the, the dead insects on the windscreen of the car. Um, when, when I do this journey now, my grandparents are no longer alive, but when I go to the, to the place, um, we don't need to, win, to clean the windscreen anymore. We can go back and forth and uh, there's hardly any insect on the windscreen. So even in Germany, we, yeah, we face this, this loss of biodiversity when you take the examples of, of insects and we need insects to pollinate um, our, our the crops and the food we want to eat. So um, this is a big, big issue. Um, and and similarly, climate change, I think we yeah, are living here in Zimbabwe now for five years. Um, every every year was was different and the unpredictability of, of the rainy season. I mean, we had the, the now the 
two very dry years. And then during the rainy season, we had these long dry spells, which were unusual when you talk to to farmers, they said, no, in the, in the past, we didn't have it. The, the rainy season uh, was, was very predictable. And um, I think whoever is, is denying climate change is, is just stupid. <laughs> and so climate change is real. Climate change is something we have to face and we have to, we have to work with it. We have to work around it to, to ensure that, that we can still survive. And uh, we have to act now, 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 now. And of course, me coming from the global south, we are responsible. We we have a big responsibility um, with our the way we are, the industries, the way yeah we we live our our daily life in the in the global north. And um, so I think it's it's our responsibility in the global north um, to to really act. Oh, thank you. That's that's very touching, just, both of just, you. And <laughs> yes, yes, Chilo. I mean, just to add to the to, to that topic of responsibility, I I I'm at a point in in my understanding of all the issues around preservation of uh, the natural biodiversity and addressing the issues of climate change. I think I think we're being pushed to to a point where it is not the responsibility of one. On and not the other. I think in one of the very interesting things in my work with Kuhn uh, uh, that I always refer uh, to in regards to this question about biodiversity uh, was a trip we once made to the Maasai people. And, 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 I, and I think that really struck me. That was some time in 2014. And we were asking the question to, to the Maasai people who are a very, uh, a very small population. And sometimes, you know, we don't often think about uh, these people and the way they are still living today in our day-to-day -day work. And we went there to ask an important question about biodiversity, about fertility, about climate change how they feel about it, if they see themselves as responsible uh, uh, towards addressing this or even contribution towards its existence. What, I, what was amazing for me, uh, interacting with the Maasai people was how immediately, because of the way they are so close to nature, they immediately st stepped up and say, yes, we are responsible, yes, we see the expression of the loss of biodiversity in our day-to-day -day life. And we feel that we have to do something. And I remember from that admission was actually born an initiative that still exists today with the Maasai people who are very small groups. So we see that. I feel it is a responsibility of everyone. The most important question then becomes, how are we interpreting that responsibility that everybody feels just like the Maasai people? Climate change, biodiversity preservation is an issue for me too. It is mm -hmm. my responsibility too. Thank you very much. Um, um, it's great and I, I agree with you. I think it's really each and every person on earth but at the same time I see this big responsibility also of the of the politicians in the global north to 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 yeah to act as well um particularly on the on the big things on yeah like like really stopping burning coal for electricity all these things this is these are decisions which are taken at at the at a, at a policy level and i think but at the same time i think it's it's each and every one of us to to think what what is my could be my contribution to what is my my carbon footprint? Um, my decision what to eat, um, and um, yeah, no thanks a lot for this statement and, and the example from the Maasai. This is really this is also touching. Can you still hear us, Chilo? Mm -hmm. I, yes, 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 I can hear you. <laughs> no, Valerie is talking to herself. Sorry. 
Sorry. Um, <laughs> Kun, you wanted to say something? Yes, I, I want to add uh, something to that uh, the Maasai story because it was really uh, touching the responsibility because, you know, for them, and that was, it was a, a micro world for them. That means they, they, and that was very touching. They say, you know, they say, um, we heard about the industry somewhere that they could be also responsible, responsible for climate change, climate change. But that was not their, um, um, th th that was not what they found, which was the big cause, because they said to, they say, you know, we did something wrong, they said. We have, um, um, uh, uh, when, when the times were good, we have, a, we have a lot of cattle. When we have a lot of cattle, we have a lot of uh, children. When we have a lot of children, there is overpopulation. So when there is overpopulation, um, there, is, there is not enough food for everybody. So when the, when the ground becomes uh, uh, not fertile, the cows were dying, uh, uh, we are that, you know, they, they, they yeah. saw the circle of this, of this oh. whole thing. And coming to the responsibility, for, for them, there was no outside world. They were the world. And, I, and I'm really thinking if we, if we have the chance, because now in my, uh, in my studio here in Belgium, I still have this uh, video of the Maasai, who is actually when people are, uh, because my studio is actually La Biomista, which is the mix of life. So when you step in, you, were, you are confronted by the, by the video of the, of the Maasai, who's telling that story so that we start to understand that if we see ourselves as a little world in itself, we take this responsibility. And, and coming in this, 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 this link between nor, uh, North and the South, the North is the little nature and the South is the big nature. And we have to, the world is from everybody. Very recently, uh, we start, I started a new project, which is with black storks. They are mainly extinct, extinct in Belgium. But, but now we want to reintroduce them in, in, um, uh, in, in, in Belgium, in the national park. And what I did is actually, I, I, I made godfather of this project, uh, a famous biologist, which is from Belgium. But I took uh, as, a, um, as the, uh, that you have godfather and godmother. And the godmother is Shido. And so Shido Govera, because, because to, to let people see that the world is for everybody, because the black stork is also flying, is flying to Africa, you know, to find their environment. And if we are concerned about that environment, then we also have this black stork. And otherwise, we don't have this black stork. And I think this is a very, a very good example of how you can make people aware about the big world. And, uh, and that we should not ruin it. Oh, great. Wow. I love the way you guys keep um, emphasizing on responsibility. That's something that we need to learn to do. We need to be responsible. Um, like uh, with the exhibition that we have running, um, I'm sure you all know about it, the um, uh, Cyclone Nidai exhibition. And we, we, we are actually trying to let, or, okay, advise people on how to be more responsible and to, to be aware of these things because it's, it's reality, like you said, Regina, it's, it's, it's reality and we need to really work on this and work now. So this issue of responsibility is something that's very, very important. And um, so that um, then leads us to our next um, issue. What moves, what moves can, can people make to curb climate change and, um, and uh, promote biodiversity? Your thoughts, what are, what are the moves that we can do? If I'm... Yes, yes, Chilo. <laughs> so um, it's indeed an important question. What what can people do 
to curb the climate change and to promote preservation of biodiversity. And I think one of the things that uh, is also that, that comes clear from how we all have to take responsibility is that we pay our attention to how we are an ecosystem. We are part and parcel of everything that is going on around us all the changes that are going on around us. And I, I find that one of our major challenges today is that in our, in our uh, uh, efforts of raising awareness, in our efforts of inviting action towards uh, climate action, towards uh, biodiversity, we, we tend to lose people either because of the thinking that we say the biggest culprit is this and not the other and and then you have pockets of people who feel like okay it is not our responsibility that's, exactly. that's number one the, the exactly. way we are communicating about it we are losing yeah. some people on the way the next thing is this issue of saying yes we're losing people on the way because of communication around responsibility but also there's, 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 there's an important point about, yes, we, we use the fossil fuel industry because it's easy to generate the numbers from there and to communicate to the world, but we are failing in interpreting how can an ordinary person in Zimbabwe take action towards um, uh, preserving the natural biodiversity? And for me, that remains an important question. How are we what, what are we doing to make our people in this country here with all the challenges that they face, what are we doing and how are we doing it to help them to start feeling like I can do something about this? And I find that one of the most important things through my work, uh, one of the uh, things we've been doing around encouraging people to take care of not cutting down trees for wood is we've been jumping in to go to look at wild fruits. We've been foraging wild fruits in partnership with some of the chefs we work with from Denmark and working to process those fruits into something valuable. And I can tell you um, an example of when we, we, when we went to some places in Chiwi harvesting mafura, uh, amarula. It is a fruit that is in abundance in all villages and people are hungry there. And we went, when we arrived, and you would find the homestead with this marula fruit. And you say, oh, can I pick a few? And say, oh, you can take that, it's useless. There's no use for that. And that was, that, that was when we arrived in the community. So we started inviting people to say, collect the fruit and give it to us. And we will pay you for collecting the fruit. We will show you how to process this fruit into something. And today, as we speak, everyone who has a marula fruit in their homestead, one that tastes good, one who has uh, marula fruits in their fields, they guard that, they see the value in it. And I think in a world where survival has become such a big thing, yes, because of climate change and many other challenges, I mean, our context, uh, our context as Zimbabwe is just so complex. And in, in such a world, it is important that we go back to basics, to really start cultivating that people start to see the value at least in the in the things in their immediate environment and that example of the mafura is just one way now you know you can easily talk about not cutting down wood when you have given the person a source of income that they can use to get access to that which is sustainable and i think until we start thinking about this you know uh, in that way where I don't think just about what I can afford in terms of buying carbon credits when I travel, but I think about a person like my grandmother in the village, a person like these ladies I work with, who the, the things they have are marula fruit, which are not much discussed on all these global platforms, but we can learn to simplify and to disseminate the message in such a way that people can see themselves in all these instances and they can see the action that they can do where they are. That could be one important step towards turning this around. On the global platforms, we talk about, you know, we, 
we, we talk about it a lot, but we need to concretize that in action and we need to make actions that bring everybody on board. And it has to respond to their need for survival at the same time. And that balance is a question that I also still wonder how we can strike that. And that's an important conversation for us to have, not just in conversation, but also in, in the same format, like as the National Art Gallery, at one point saying yes to convening the National Art Gallery into a farm so people can see and be challenged in the most unusual of this. And they can start to see, oh, sure, I can do something. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow oh my goodness back to basics gosh wow and this is our responsibility as well to now find ways to um educate people like you said it's it's something big that we, we need to have a conversation about and uh, about this issue and wow <laughs> goodness it's 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 really it's really touching and it's 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 very important at the same time um thank you very much chilo um regina yeah i can also um stress i think this indigenous knowledge which is here in the country and um yeah th th there's a lot of um food indigenous food here wild food which is which is very good for the diet and um now with with Corona, I think there is a there is a high demand for for tea, and and everybody wants to drink the the the, the, the teas here, the indigenous teas to to help with with, with COVID nineteen. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, and yeah. there are many other crops which are very not only crops but also. Um, other wild foods and we are actually in, in one of the no actually in two two projects even we um together with the farmers we produce um fodder also for the for the cattle uh because also because of the drought there is not enough um fodder for them so instead of the farmers buying uh all all fodders from from the industries and um we we um together with the i can't remember which university it was is it chinoy university I'm not 100% sure about it, but they developed actually a recipe for for cattle fodder from leaves and seed pods, etc., from um, from from the bush, um, which is very nutritious for the cattle and a good alternative um, during this this lean season. So um, there are ways to to deal with uh, with climate change and 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 this is actually to to use these <clears throat> available crops which are in the bush it, it at the same time make people also aware of the value of of, yeah. of the forest of, um, of of shrubs which yeah seem to be of no value just standing in your way when you want to go forward there's a tree yeah, so let's chop it down and wear firewood but no instead this this tree is giving Giving something to eat to my cattle when when there is otherwise not not enough for the cattle and when when they would die so this this has yeah a positive aspect for the for the cattle and for for the environment to really protect the value of this tree and it's similar with the with the marula tree and, and and many other trees which which we can as humans consume or for our for our livestock we can we can use it well this is this is amazing. Um, we, we're sometimes caught between a rock and a hard place, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes. Because like you said, with the, with, the, with the corona issue or the pandemic, it's now you don't know what to do. But like you said, we, we, we also just still need to be aware of um, what we're supposed to be doing. And we need to teach each other um, what, what should be happening. Um, Thank you very much, Regina, for, for that point. I'm, I'm um, actually having my blackjack tea this afternoon, so I'm, I'm really... <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> great. <laughs> okay, um, mm. I think now, I don't know if there's... Yes, Kun. Can, yeah. Can I add something to yes, this, please. if I'm allowed? Um, yes, you. <laughs> um, because, you know, for, for me, what, what I think, uh, if we're talking about the issue of climate change, for example, what I still find is that we have to restore, uh, restore 
um, uh, uh, the social is issue. Mm -hmm. And that means that we, we have to build an understanding between each other, but globally, in my opinion, uh, mm -hmm. because otherwise we will be always uh, divided. Mm -hmm. I can see that today there is the movement is standing up, you know, for climate. It's, uh, and that's very hopeful because it comes from young people. But the, the danger is that it, it, it goes away because of, um, because of kind of movements who are going to the social system. Uh, we, we know, for example, the Gilets Jaunes in France who are protesting uh, and, uh, and they go for equality. You can't, um, you can't actually tell them the, that, that they have to spend more money for climate change or for other kind of products because you know they, they are still fighting for bread on the table. And this is globally in many places. Also when you go into Africa or South America, you know, where people fighting for their lives. Um, if, if we don't, if we, if we don't uh, restore the social issues which becomes more and more important to the whole digital system that we have because today we can uh, somebody who is um, um, uh, who is posting something on, on 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 social media that he is living a good life and is very uh, and 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 have a lot of uh, success while somebody else is seeing on the other side of the world and seeing I have nothing and I have to and I have to live my life. You know, this is a kind of uh, in a, uh, imbalance, and yes. so we have to restore that fact. So, in that in, in, in that point of view, my, my work together with Shido is that um, um, uh, in in my in my project with the chickens, which is which is about sustainable food, but is also about uh, 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 social equality. Um, so that when you when you do the crossbreeding, you know. Because I'm a guy who believes in, 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 in crossovers. You, you come to a certain point that you say, okay, when we make something global, um, we have to be aware that it comes from the local field. And so at that moment, you know, when I start to understand that and I had my cosmopolitan chicken, which was crossbreed, I started to say, let's have this big diversity and to crossbreed it with actually uh, a local chicken and and what you get there is 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 a balance between local and global and out of that i created that statement that said the global only exists by the generosity of the local and it is the word generosity in my opinion who is a very important word uh, because we lost in 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 the past we were not uh we were not asking for something we are we were taking something. Mm. And so we forgot that that kind of generosity is something that we have to restore. And if we restore that, we can have respect for each other. When we have respect for each other, we have respect for an environment. Mm. So in that kind of circle, I think that, that the cooperation between, between Shido and me is actually saying this kind of circle that that and that's why we bring that why we brought this farm into into your gallery because we, because we at that moment we were bringing also people from community into the gallery who get a voice and who, who were the people on the local field who raised up and said look what we did and to present it to another audience which they never get in contact with i think this is an important Wow. Very, very important. Uh, respect for each other and respect for the environment. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think we'd need to have another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much, Kuhn, for, for your input. Um, right now, we are going to get into our question and answer session or just comments from from participants. And then after that, we'll wrap up with uh, your last few words. So um, is there anyone who'd like to comment or ask questions? No? 
I'm just going to add a comment on this uh, uh, um, aspect of indigenous knowledge in the, and actually how important when uh, uh, it is. Uh, I always tell the and uh, this goes back to my childhood uh, story with my grand. When we used to go into the forest uh, harvesting mushrooms, uh, this this question of generosity uh, that uh, Kun was bringing up, is, my grandmother used to say, when you go out and you see a lot of mushrooms in one place, when you harvest them, you always have to cut and leave the stems in the ground. And when you leave the stems in the ground, you also have to leave a few mushrooms standing. When you take all the mushrooms that have gills in them, when you the, the ones that produce a spores, when you go home, if you cook them in a pot, you cook with the pot open. If you cook them inside the house, you open the door of the house and you keep the pot open. And, mm -hmm. and as a young girl, I never used to understand what that meant. And I remember I used to ask him, why? And he says, so that the gods of the forest can give you more mushrooms next year. <laughs> and, I, and I think there's something powerful from that story yeah. that was told to me as a young girl and how it continues to show up in my work today. Uh, uh, and, and also when I started learning about mushrooms to understand the science behind mushroom uh, growing and, and, and the multiplication of the seed and everything. And I think these simple ways of passing down information like my grandmother did as something that we need to continue to to nature, to mm. continue to, 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 to invest in and make sure that we don't lose it. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I'm a foster mother today, and, and I feel like one of the most important things I can do is to share these little stories, to bring my children in the garden, to teach them how to preserve seed, to teach them. This is the kind of action that will really um, build towards the momentum that we need to address the issues that press us today uh, about uh, uh, biodiversity and, uh, and, and climate change. Beautiful. Uh, I love the, that the generosity part of uh, leave, uh, leave the stems to the gods. That will give you more um, the gods of the land or something like that. Um, so that they give you... <laughs> No, it's it's amazing. It's, it's, uh, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chilo. Um, yeah, I think it, and it, it's also it's it's uh, the respect for for this creation for, for the nature in it as well, that, that we don't chop all the mushrooms, we don't take everything, but, <laughs> exactly. just, um, but that it is a system that's an ecosystem, which we where we as a, as a human being, we are a bit like the, the elephant in the in the, the china shop <laughs> and <laughs> very often and and um sorry for the elephant but <laughs> um, okay. yeah i think we we need to uh, also make people aware that that we need yeah. to have respect for 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 nature and mm. for the products which are coming because this is what what we live from and uh, we want to continue living from yeah that's true true and also the mycelium who is making the combination I think mm. psyllium is always, uh, it's a very nice word, you know, the seeds of the mushrooms is the mycelium of life, this, what is mm. connected, whereas everything is, it's not disappearing, it's always there, and it is your decision what you are doing. That's, uh, I like it. Wow. Thank you very, very much. Um, I don't know if there's anyone who would like to say anything else? Um, any more thoughts? No? Okay. Um, um. <laughs> there are many things. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're go on for hours, probably. But it's a very nice mm. conversation. It is, it is. Mm. Uh, Chido, did you want to say something? Um, you, uh, I mean, it's just... Um, uh, from from what I'm hearing, that uh, uh, by changing the smallest of things, by changing how we consume, which is something that everybody 
can take a part in changing our consumption patterns uh, mm -hmm. is one of the most important things that every each and every person can do where they are and I, and I <laughs> and I think it also then on the action that is possible on a personal level there's action that is possible at institutional levels and these things of thinking the systems thinking understanding part of a large system uh, learning from nature uh, this biomimicry is, is, is an important part that we should uh, th that I personally think as individuals, uh, as leaders of institutions, these are some of the things that we really have to work towards promoting, to build towards that respect for nature, to build towards that um, generosity that we need to create. Great. Yes. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think in change. particular the systems thing to be to be aware that that we as a human being we are just a tiny, tiny, tiny thing. There, there is so much more outside and it's all interrelated. And with, with the decision I take, um, I, I interfere in this system. So I, I have to be um, very critical uh, with, with each and every step I take and to which that, that I interfere in a positive way. And um, or if I do something negative, at least then I should be do something else, which is then balancing out again. And I think we, we have to be very much aware that we as humans um, in our decision making, we are part of a system and, yeah. but and I, therefore we can also, we can contribute to changes. We, we yeah. can change it to, to a better. But there is another thing I think which is very important and that, that comes to actually, it, um, to, to um, continents like Africa or South America or, um, Less than less than actually in, in, in Europe or North America. I think we have to learn from these continents. And I think what we have to learn from these continents is that the community building. We are forgotten in one way or another that every uh, every street um, in our region can be a new community, and that the, that the voice of that community is an important voice. Um, I think I think we are forgotten. We are forgotten because we, we put everything in the hands of a of a government. Um, not that I'm not that I want to criticize every government, but what I like what I think that we are losing is the power of a community. That means that if you have an idea and you put it inside of the community, you can read very quickly. Of the, of the ideas working, yes or no. Because in the communities, they, they, um, they take it immediately to their, to, uh, to their way of surviving, and then they evaluate very quickly. If you put something on the system of a government, you know, then, then and you, you try to develop this into the world, you only read it after years. And when you see it after years and it's failing, you can't get it out of the system very quickly. So for me, building all kinds of communities with all kinds of new experiments gives you an insight of what can be bigger. And uh, in one way or another, we have forgotten that. And I think that the continents like Africa or, um, or, South, or South America, you know, of the South and the North, I mean, the South, you, you have this in your hands. And that's why I started to say, that is where you breathe new leadership. There's where you see how, how, you, can, uh, or how you can build things. And this is actually what is, what is, uh, what is failing in our system. And our system, and that's very cruel because in our, our system, we are ruining a lot of biodiversity. We installed the monoculture, you know, then we were trying to put the monoculture into, into the totally world, which is, which is even worse. Uh, we forgot that, uh, that, that, you, that you can, that you have to hunt your food, for example. Uh, that, that you have to bring these little things together to bring it. No, we, we did uh, the global industry and then it becomes money and then it becomes very cruel and then you want to implant and then you want, and then all the trouble actually is starting. 
So if we want to make a new world, we, we, should, we, ha, we need new leaders, but we also need leaders who has the insight of a more um, a spiritual view on things. So that, uh, things that, that, yeah, I don't know how to call it because we, we have to find a new word for a new leader. Um, and I think I think that is that is very important, and it, and we need it in the global world. We need it in the global world, because actually, the leaders that we choose today, I don't know anymore. Anyway. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Thank you, thank you, Kun. Um, it's a very very valid point. Um, and also, May I the add? Power, the power Excuse of, me. Yes, yes. I am. I am Ivan Kamilenkovic, and I am working with Chido for a very long time. And okay. I'm also involved in the in the mushroom things. And I really enjoyed this conversation. And thank you very much, Chido, for inviting me. I only would like to add one thing uh, uh, as far as my job and my world and my life. Uh, is mushroom. Just in order to, to uh, emphasize one very ordinary experience and just in line with Cohen, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Kuhn, I'm sorry for a wrong pronunciation okay. of, your, of, your, of your family name, to add, you know, uh, uh, you fully right. Um, it is a problem about the local community and it is about a problem also about the hypocrisy because everybody is talking about the biodiversity, very much wondering about that, but then with the full capacity are going in the supermarket and, and purchase and buying a wild type of mushrooms who are just collected from the nature, from the very poor regions of Europe and the rest of the world. And instead that we say, that is only example, and sorry, I'm always based on things, what I'm doing, what I know the best. Instead to say, listen, we will stop. If everybody of us start from our own personal demand and said, listen, I don't want to buy wild type of mushrooms because it is purchased in some very poor region because people there cannot survive otherwise. Very often they are blackmailed. And of course that such a population of the people who are harvesting those cannot take a care about the remain with mycelium, etc. Instead that we say, okay, now it is over. We will not go still in the in the in the countries where the story about the biodiversity is more more stronger still the the annual turnover uh, with the wild types of mushrooms is the most bigger so you know it is always really uh, we need to start from ourselves because it is not story only about the mushroom if we could maintain the mushroom we will maintain the trees if we maintain the trees we will maintain the birds it is the nature and nothing is not separated so I thank you very much for inviting me, Tido, in this conversation, and I really enjoyed. And just would like to add some other, I, some maybe you already have that idea, but just to add something that if we start from ourselves now and today, like you, uh, Miss Regina said, then we can do something. An example to stop to buy wild types of mushrooms in the supermarket. That's all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. And thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for Kunia, the, OK, thanks. Kunia, the last person to speak now? You wanted to say something. Me? Yes, you wanted ah, to say ah. something? Uh, no, not really. But OK. Yeah. <laughs> um, I um I I want to say something. I think you know you know what is a pity. I think that we have to speak about diversity. Mm. I think that it should be um, 
it should be part of what we are. And I feel always a pity that we have to speak about that, that diversity is a given thing. Mm -hmm. And if you, if, you look, if you look globally, that we don't understand that we need this bio and cultural diversity to survive. Um, because, because it's very, it, and that's why I was making a reference to the social system. It is very easy from, from my chair to say that the Maasai has to eat vegetables, for example, and that we have to become um, vegetarians. And if you go there, you know, and there is nothing growing, and the only thing that you have is cattle, mm -hmm. we should understand all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. This is also for me diversity, yeah. that we have to understand cultures, and mm -hmm. in that kind of culture, because, because if we will start to make global rules for everybody, it will not work in the world. Never. That's why this, this balance between the global field and the local field should be, should be well taught. And for me, that's on the level of human rights. Huh? This, is, this, is, um, this is how the research on that would be. And I try to do it with my work. I try to do with my work to, to, to make all this conversation worldwide in different communities with different cultures. And I think a lot of people still don't understand the term diversity. Yeah. This is, uh, and it's a pity, I think. Okay, that's, wow. <laughs> uh, those are beautiful words. Thank you for, 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 for those um, closing remarks. Um, well, um, like like we discussed earlier, we need to keep talking about these things. We need to keep reminding each other that it is our responsibility and we need to respect ourselves. We need to respect each other. We need to respect the environment. Um, and together we can actually work uh, towards um, promoting uh, biodiversity and being aware of climate change. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us. Um, Regina and Chido, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Kuhn, thank you very much. And um, yeah. everybody else, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. So, okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, thanks. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Bye. 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 Bye.